I picked out the following colors that I think I might use on the tree. <clears throat> Black, espresso, cool gray 20%, cool gray 50%, and sepia. It's really pretty dark bark. Um, which really is just about black on the left hand side. So that's pretty easy to just pencil some black. But I'm gonna leave a little bit of the lighter bits just for some variety, lighter bits of the watercolor. limb. It's coming out on the side of the tree and swinging behind it. Coming out over here. <clears throat> Inside this knot is black. switch to espresso for this dark ring of color around the knot. It's like a circle. Fifty percent cool gray. white part is wider on the left and the right than it is at the top and bottom. Whoops. I'm going to go over the outside edge with a 20% cool gray. It almost looks like a little keyhole. And on the inside part, next to the black hole, I'm just lightly penciling some sepia. Okay, back to black, and we're going to carve out this rough bark. espresso is too dark for inside there. Okay, 50% cool gray for the light areas of the bark, at least to begin with. We'll probably lighten this up with something else as well. bottom part of this limb.
using some sandbar brown and that will help lighten up a little bit of this. Gonna lightly pencil over the gray that I did. It's looking a bit too stripy, too much contrast. I want it to relate better. And the tree gets darker as it comes up to the top, so I'm going to go in there maybe with espresso first, and if I need to, I'll come back with black. Now I'm going to use the 20% cool gray and I'm going to come inside the other gray shapes and lighten up maybe in the middle of them a little bit. trying to connect some of these shapes too so there's not a lot of space in between Just a bit of a suggestion up here at the top where it's darker and more shadowed. I'm 
We need a bit of a darker edge on the right side as well. I'm going to use espresso on that. And that's going to help make the trunk look a bit rounder uh, when you have a cylinder shape like this. If you darken uh, both edges, it helps push it back this way so it looks rounder. Definitely the shadow, the dark shadow on the left side of the tree is much wider. I just need to get the edge of the, of the right hand side a little bit darker so that it will look rounder. And then I'm lightly going to go over, not the whole thing, but closest to the edge of the tree, light pressure, black. And then we're going to go inside some of these shapes right at the very edge and put some black in there.
and I'm going to reinforce <clears throat> the highlight a little bit. I think I'll try white, but I'm not going to press really hard. And this is just going to go right in the center of some of these later spots. And not necessarily on all of them. I would concentrate this more toward the middle part of the tree. trying to create dimension with this contrast. I think we're getting there, but I'm not sure we're there yet. It's still looking kind of smooth. Perhaps a bit more black, a little bit thicker. that's helping. I was a little too weak with my black to begin with inside these shapes. I'm not sure I like that hook thing there. I'll cut that off. I think for now I'm going to leave that and move on. We can always come back and do more if we need to. Okay, underneath here is really very dark. And so we'll treat that like we treated the flower pot down here. I don't want to just put black in it though. There we go. Violet blue. I'm going to start with violet blue. And I'm going to put black cherry right on top of everything I just did. I'm going to take dark green
Okay, let's do that on the other side. We started with violet blue. black cherry dark green Okay, and now this metal work up here. I'm going to use my blue again because there's some straight edges on this. <clears throat> Let's see. English red light. There's some rust, rusty spots on here. Black. And I think I want sepia. Maybe sand. No, it might be sandbar brown. Okay. With our ruler. place a shadow at the top of this beam here. So I'm drawing in with black. I'm going to take the English red light and put a little bit of it on the edges here and there, not color the whole thing in. I'm going to do the same up here. that 50% gray because there's reflected light on this. The light's bouncing up from below. And then I want another line up here. There's pretty black rim up at the top. I'm going to 
color it in with black. with the gray. And I'm also going to put some of this gray with the strokes going up and down vertically. And I'm going to go on top of that with the sandbar brown. more of the English red color. It's just, it's a little bit rusty. And the black, I need to come along this very, very bottom edge. So in, there's an inside edge here. Using dark umber. I'm going to take this dark umber and go along this edge as well. more of the English red. Fifty percent gray. Now I'm going to take the twenty percent cool gray. And just lighten up that edge a little bit. And here as well. Make like a darker shadow here. Black is what I'm using. back to the blue violet 
I want to introduce some of this onto the edge of the tree where where the tree is against that color that we created. There's also quite a dark shadow in here. And of course I have to go over that with other colors to darken it up. So I'm going to use black cherry just like I did on here. to take dark umber and go over that. Gives it a little bit more life to have those other colors in it. And let's see, what do we need to do here? I'm going to take dark brown. And try to get this to blend a little bit better. I like that. This section here is really in shadow and needs to be darker than this section up here. And I think I've achieved that. That could be a little duller color. Amber brown on top of that. I think I'm happy with that. Okay, so now what we have left is the rest of the piano and the ground. And what I'm going to do is work on the piano just like I did right in here. You saw everything that I did there. I'm going to do that probably for most of this and we'll come back and do the keyboard and the pedals. So I will see you in a while. I've just gotten started on the piano and I want to point out I'm using some different colors in uh, this very bright highlight area over here on the left of the piano. So before I forget to mention that, I started with yellow ochre and colored in yellow ochre where I could see golden type areas. This is where this, the stain of the piano has worn off. And some of it is pretty bright highlight. So I took eggshell and went on top of that where these really bright highlights are. And there's a little bit of a pinky kind of a glow, pinky peachy. I'm using salmon pink 
to go around those shapes. And then I'm going to come back in with the browns that I used down in here before. Hi, popping in again as I'm working on this piano just to relay some colors that I'm using. Um, this little strip right here, I layered bronze and sepia a few times to get it this dark. I've got black lines, I've got a little bit of gray outline, some eggshell. That was about it for that one. This area is a little bit more complex. There's yellow in it, there's pink in it, there's brown streaks in it, black. Um, so I'm using the following colors on that. For the yellow areas, which are basically the top, almost half, the top half is like a yellowy color. The bottom half is more pinky. So I'm for that using beige sienna. And then um, one of my browns for the darker streaks. But this beige sienna is not light enough. So I just went over it with 30% warm gray. And I, I still have more work to do on it, but I wanted to relay those colors before I failed to do that. So going forward, if I see a yellowy area, I will be using the bronze. If it's a pinky area, I will be using beige sienna, my browns, and my black. Okay.